Hi everyone and I hope all of you are doing well. So if that is your first time on my channel then welcome and I'm very happy that you are here. And if you will enjoy the content of this video please consider subscribing to my channel and as well as hitting the like button so we can really spread this video to more people. Alright so in this one we are going to see what is the weight keyword that is commonly used across developers that are using Python. Now I see a lot of developers that really don't see the benefits of using the weight keyword and as well as what the magic that it does in the background. So that is related to something that is called context managers. So that will be our main focus basically on this tutorial and I hope that this will be a wonderful addition to your Python skills so make sure to watch till the end. Let's get started. Alright, so the with keyword can allow us to basically perform actions before and after the main action that we like to take in our code. So for example, when we want to interact with a file and basically to write a basic text, then we probably want first to open a session with that file in the background and then right after we do some stuff with that file, then we'd also like to close the session with that file because otherwise the file is going to remain busy forever and that is something that we look to avoid because this is something that could interrupt the next actions that we like to take with this file. So in that case, actually when Python uses the open function to work against the files, then it goes ahead and always uses the with statement before that. And there's actually a great reason when we do this. So now I'm going to basically execute this code and explain what I'm doing here. So I don't know if you watched my file object tutorials or even any file object tutorial at all on YouTube, but basically when you want to write some text to a file, then you are always going to see those two lines. So we will always start with the with keyword and then we will use the built-in function that is called open which is designed for interacting with files and then we will specify the file that we'd like to interact with and as well as the mode that we'd like to access to that file. Now when we work with files basically you can write to a file or you can add an additional text to a file or you can only read from that file. So those three would be the modes that you can interact against files with Python. And then you will specify the variable that you would like to work with throughout the interaction of that file. And in our case it is f. And then since now that I have a file object created thanks to this open built-in function, then I can basically use methods like write like I do in the second line. So I say here, hello to this file. So when we execute this file, we should see a new file being created and as well as this text inside of it. So if I go now and execute this file, then you can see that we have a new file created in here. And if I was to open that, then you can see that we can see the hello to this file text right here. But I want to explain what is the beauty of using this with keyword now. So thanks to that with keyword, Python knows in the background what actions needs to be done before and after the main action that we do here. And if you pay attention, the main action that we do here is writing a text to that file. But in the background, Python knows how to open a session successfully with that file and as well as closing it right after we finish our main actions. So this is how with keyword could be extremely powerful. And we can also create those before and after actions by our own. So the combination of things that I explained now are called context managers. So thanks to context managers, you can basically design a powerful code that will allow you consistently to take actions before and after the main thing that you do. Now you might write an automation script that will go ahead and basically connect to a specific server and then whenever you finish your actions maybe you would always like to restart this destination server. So you see this is a great candidate for a context manager because now you'd always like to consistently take a specific action before and after you perform this main action in the destination server. So let's see an example of how context managers could be extremely useful in your projects. 
So now I am going to not use with keyword basically to prove you what will happen if I was to interact with a file without using the context managers, which is the with keyword. So for that purpose, I'm going to basically grab the code in here and paste this into another example file that I have in here. So let me put this in here and make the font bigger. And now I am not going to use context manager unlike before. So I'm basically going to say here, f equals to open to this statement, which is again, interacting with hello.txt. And then I'd like to write to this file the same text, but let's go ahead and change the file name that we'd like to create. So let's call it hello to like that. And I am now going to execute this file. But before I do that, I like to print some Boolean variable, which is going to look like f dot close. So this will make sure to turn us the current status of the file. So we should see here false because the file session should not be closed. So I'm going to run now example two. And you can see that we see false here. But now if I was to go back to our example one and basically go out of the context manager and say print f dot closed again and actually execute the example one file now then you can see that we receive true so this is what with keyword does again it allows you to take that specific action that you'd like to take after you're done with your main actions. Now there's actually one beautiful example that I'd like to show where context managers is a wonderful thing that you maybe want to add to your Python project. So again, I'm going to go back to example two. And before we run this, I am going to import the time library to wait a minute before we close the Python process that is going to run here. So it is going to be as easy as saying, import time. So I'm importing the time library. And before we finish the main execution of this example two file, which is a very short file with only three to four lines of code, then I'm only going to say here time.sleep. And I just like to wait 60 seconds before I finish my job with this example two file. So now I'd also like to delete the hello to txt file to really recreate that. So I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to approve that by deleting anyway. And I can delete now the print f dot close because we understood the concepts. So now the example two file is going to be a Python process that is going to lock my file. Now I'm going to execute the example two again. And you can see that the file is still running because we don't receive any messages about how the Python finished its execution. So now let's take as advantage the fact that this file still runs and see what will happen, for example, if we try to delete the hello2 file from our file explorer. So I'm going to bring this in, pointing to the same location of our project. And now I'd like to basically try to delete the hello2 file, which is right here. So now if I try to delete this, then you can see that it says to us the action can't be completed because the file is open in Python. So what that means, it means that there is a Python process that still tries to basically write to this file and the process is still locking it. And now if we do the same with the example one file where we use context managers, meaning that we use the with keyword, so I'm going to basically quickly say here import time and I'm going to go here and say, excuse me, time.sleep 60 like that. And let's try to delete the hello.txt file to make this be created again. And now I'm going to run the example one file. So if I run that, then you can see that we have this file still running. And if we open our file explorer again, and basically try to delete the hello file now, because remember that this is the file it tries to create. So I will delete that. Then you can see that I can really do it because now the 
with keyword is basically allowing us to take the post actions after the main action that I do here, which is again writing to this file a basic text. So this is perfect because in the background Python knows how to open a session and close it right after because there are no more actions in the indentation of this with keyword. So if I was to basically say here something else, then what Python will do, it will first open the session against the file and then it will write this to that file and then it will print hey and then only after going out of this with indentation then it will go ahead and close the session with that file in the background. So we can totally understand now how powerful context managers are and now I'd like to show how we can create context managers by our own meaning that we will design consistent actions before and after the main actions that we'd like to take. So let's dive in and see how we can do that. Okay, so I separated now a new project to two files where in the first we will basically create the context manager. So I named this file design and then we are going to go to that other file and basically import everything from here and to really make use of this context manager that we are going to create. Now, to be honest, there are more than one way to create context managers. You can also use a decorator of context manager to basically make it perform like it is. But I do like the approach of creating context manager with some magic methods that comes in with classes. But I will leave links in the description so you can also follow along the other ways that you can create context managers. Alright, so let's get started. Now I'm going to simulate a situation where we connect to a server and then we do some software updates and installations. And then since those actions are always requiring a restart, then I'm going to simulate that by the end of our wait usage, then I'm always going to restart the computer. So let's go and start. So first we should create a class. So let's call it connect like that. And then the actions that you'd like to take before and after the main actions are going to be within some magic methods. Now the magic methods in Python are saved for special actions exactly like this. So for example, if you'd like to design now the actions that you always want to take before the main action, you will go and say def double underscore enter double underscore like that. So you see the enter built-in magic method is going to include some code with the actions that you'd always like to take before. So here we can say something like print trying to connect to a server. Now since we want to receive at least one parameter before we instantiate this class, then it is a perfect idea to go ahead and create a constructor and basically receive at least one parameter with maybe the name of that server that we'd like to connect. So I'm going to go up here and also say def double underscore init. So this is actually a way that we can initialize the init method because this is the constructor and we can say here host name like that. And we can also say self dot host name equals to host name. So we are assigning the received argument to the self object like the following and let's separate those. So I can say now here trying to connect to a server and I can actually turn this to being an F string and I can say here self dot host name. So this will execute before the code that is going to be located in the with keyword. And if you want to execute some actions after with keyword, then it will be by using def exit like that. So the exit magic method function will receive some actions that you'd always like to perform after the main actions that you'd like to take. So I can say here something like print and I can say here updates finished restarting and I can basically refer to that self.hostname again and I can add some dots here to basically make it like more real love. All right, so now that we have completed designing the class, then let's test this out by using the with keyword to really turn on the context managers. So I can say here first from design import connect. So I'm importing the class and then I'm going to say with and right after it, we are going to instantiate this connect class. So I can say connect. And if you remember, it expects for one argument, which is hostname, 
So I can say something like maybe gym server like that. And let's go and make this a little bit more smaller so we can see everything. And then right after the as keyword, let's create a variable like server and colon and then go inside the with keyword. Now, if you remember inside the indentation here, those will be the main actions that you'd like to take. So I can say here something just to simulate that installing Python and I can also say print installing and updating more tools, something like that. And now if I go out of the with keyword, meaning out of this indentation, then automatically we should expect for the double underscore exit method to being executed. So to simulate that, I'm also going to say here print this is after double underscore exit to really make you understand that this will be the last line that is going to be executed because the double underscore exit method will be executed in here in the background. So now let's run the main.py file and test the results. And I can actually see that the double underscore exit method receives more parameters by default. So let's fix that very quickly. Um, and I think this should be by easily trying to recreate this double underscore exit method. And then the drop down will give us the parameters that needs to be created here. So I can say double underscore exit again. And you can see that it receives by default three more parameters. So my mistake about that and sorry about this. So I'm just going to auto complete that. And now everything is going to function well. So if we execute our run file again, then Let's see what is going on here. So first of first, we see the trying to connect to a server, which comes from the enter. And then we see installing Python and as well as installing and updating more tools. So those will be the main actions that we basically take. And then we see that we receive updates finished, restarting gym server. So this comes from the exit method and this is perfect because this runs in the background right after we get out of the wait indentation. And only right after everything, we see the this is after double underscore exit, which really comes from here. So as you can see, context managers are very, very powerful and could be useful where you'd like to take consistently some actions before and after the main actions that you take exactly like here where we simulate some software installations. Now for sure you can go ahead and be more advanced with context managers. You can also create context managers with decorators as I said before and you can also go ahead and do some exception handling in the exit method if everything not runs successfully. And you can also go ahead and create more instance methods in your class to really make this program be more dynamic and to really have more maintainable and more readable code. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you will have some positive feedback about this tutorial. And if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and as well as consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you in my future uploads.